Sometimes you just need to spread your ass wide, you know, and not focus on the narrow. When I'm not stopping till we're exalted, sitting up with fucking millions, I ain't halting. I'm quick to pick it up and kill him. I take what he left off and continue to grill him. Electrified, I'm turning up the wattage. I'm a stalker with a machete outside your cottage. Once you spotted and dotted, you're dropping and rotting. Me and X are just the opposite of Batman and Robin. Yo, what up everyone? In this video, we're gonna talk about a strategy that probably doesn't really look good or even seem feasible enough to call a farm, but it's one of my most popular farms that I think I do because it encompasses so much. We're talking about combining Aldum, Silithus, and Angoro and wrapping it all into one big farm. Why am I doing this? Well, one of the most underlooked and overpriced commodities I think tends to be from Cataclysm. Not so much the herbs most of the time, but definitely the ores. The ores are always selling for a good price. And one of the most pain in the ass things to do is to farm for cataclysm ores, because a lot of the zones are just completely out of the way from anything else, and they suck to farm because the zones are actually somewhat huge and have a low density of ores in comparison to most of the vanilla zones that surround them, and they don't respawn all that fast. So if you've been kind of following my videos so far, you'll know that I like to try and combine zones of similar ores. This gives me an opportunity to completely clean out a zone, move on to the next one, wipe that zone, and by the time I come back, everything's been respawn again. Suffice to say, if there's multiple people farming, most of these zones that I farm, that's kind of rare, but there are exceptions. And now that Aldum and even more so Silithus has been upgraded or repurposed for the end of Battle for Azeroth, we can take advantage of Chromie and shift the time backwards. I also want to take some time out to address that this is probably one of Blizzard's biggest low-key underrated fails that nobody seems to realize, but since the mobs are 120 in these newer zones, you get the BFA leather, but the ores and herbs are the same. And if you think about the amount of zones that the newer herbs and ores that were added in with the release of like Najatar, this really pit a lot of people against each other in one specific zone. It's like the same thing as sticking all the Akundas bite in one zone. I get the lore, and that zone is probably big enough, but really? Anyway, for this farm we'll be taking the portal to Aldum from Stormwind, and if you haven't already switched these zones to their older time period, you can find Chromie and talk to her and have her switch it over. There's a little icon on your mini-map, I believe, if you have trouble finding her. Now usually in Aldum I break off into one of two routes. I start towards the west or head to the east. Either way, we're specifically looking to follow the mountain ridges, especially up at the north. Now depending on the price of Whiptail, I usually look this stuff up before I farm it to evaluate the net worth of the whole farm or just purely ores and herbs, no BOEs or rares or anything else. I'll follow one of the rivers or the marshy oasis kind of areas of the south and combine that into my farm. I'm not looking to spend that much time here, I'm literally just trying to optimize my route and pick up the ores and herbs before I hit Silithus, which is where we want to be, ultimately. In our farm we're going to find cinder bloom, aluminium, and most notably pyrite, all of which sells for really good prices for me on the auction house. Not to mention the rares in Cataclysm I think are fairly rare, so if you see one and nobody else is around, you should definitely kill that bad dad, because each BOE I've got tends to sell for quite a bit of gold, especially considering nobody's really focusing on Cataclysm stuff. I'm also pretty sure it's one of the most hated expansions for the majority of the player base, but I digress. As our focus is purely heading to the north of Aldum, we're going to be crossing over into Silithus at a specific point around where the Encourage raids are. This is also usually at the point where I use my Dark Moon Firewater Potion if I have one. Now, Silithus is much like Winterspring in the fact that it's overrun with Thorium. The best thing about mining Thorium though is the Arcane Crystals, so while Thorium Ore doesn't usually sell for much, the Arcane Crystals definitely do. And if you're wondering what to do with all that Thorium, I usually end up splitting the stacks up if I have an overabundance. I'll make some Thorium Bars out of some, and maybe if I'm feeling particularly crazy, I'll craft some old gear and try and push that. Otherwise, I just sell it at market value and focus on the other things. The beauty of Silithus is that nobody is ever here, unlike Winter Spring. So while you'll be getting Sungrass, Golden Sansom, you'll also have a better opportunity to grab a Black Lotus, which is still an extremely rare herb and sells for quite a bit. Oh, and the occasional True Silver node that spawns too. There are specific mobs that you can focus on in this zone if you want. The Wind Elementals can probably farm on its own, but 
If you do decide to occasionally kill them in passing, you can grab a few essences of air, which also still sell well. And let's not forget about any rare mobs that we come across, as some of these BOEs are probably still worth trying to sell too. After we farm the Outer Rim of Silithus, we'll pass into Angoro. Now there's only maybe two or three things in Angoro that are very specific to why we would come here. And listen up, because I think this is totally underrated, and I haven't seen anyone really talk about this. There are two small spots in Angoro that provide me with a really good amount of gold. The first is this little alcove with the stone golems that kind of roam around, and the best thing about these stone golems is that they drop guardian stones, and the guardian stones are used to craft some pretty pricey transmog pieces. So while these don't sell consistently, when they do sell, they sell in really large quantities. I'm assuming it's because the people that can make this gear only craft it once in a while, but they probably go through and craft a bunch of pieces at the same time. So it's worth maybe saving up a few and waiting till the price is right and listing them on the auction house. The other place in Angoro is the cave where Amy the gorilla is at. I always love the Congo reference. But this cave is a really plentiful spot for ghost mushrooms. So plentiful in the fact that they will respawn all the time. It's literally a race for me to try and pick all these and have nothing left to pick. Oh, and also, I don't know when they added this, but there's a chest that randomly spawns in this cave that always drops a BOE blue. So if you're lucky enough to see that chest, and you get a piece that is actually transmog worthy, not some necklace or ring, then you're in for a treat, because they sell for a really high amount of gold. Now if you remember anything about Angoro, you'll remember the power crystals that were used in the zone and how well they sold on the auction house back in the day, because nobody actually wanted to go and gather those things. They don't really sell too well anymore. I've sold a few for some measly gold, but in the grand scheme of things, it probably isn't worth it to waste your time anymore. There's people that level in this zone still, so I think they just try to get rid of them as they can for a few extra gold. Other than that though, you'll still be mining thorium and true silver, and you'll still see golden sandsome and the occasional sun grass or blind weed near the swampy water, but the two specific spots I talked about in Angoro make it extremely worth it to hit this zone. Everything else here just adds on to our original farm. And so with that, we could follow the ridge and exit Ungoro the same way we came in and finish off mining in Silithus. The interesting thing here is now you have two choices. If you used a potion like the Dark Moon Firewater or whatever, you can just focus on purely farming Silithus and Ungoro because the ore and herb density will make it extremely worth it. Otherwise, if you don't or you're just done farming, it's worth it to go back and hit Alderman on your way back. Because again, you might as well take advantage of your time while you're out here, and the higher prices that Cataclysm has to offer you. And that's it. I hope you found this guide helpful, or at least it's given you a different option or perspective in regards to what or how to farm a little bit more effectively while you're out there. Thanks for watching.